very well and um, that person is wise All right, so Z, nine years. Tell me how wonderful I've been. You have been a prisoner in my. <laughs> you have been a prisoner of my love. Is it is it is, is it shackle tight? Not too tight. It's not too tight. Not too tight. <laughs> Are you feeling choked or are you just feeling like... I like where I am. You do. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, I just found out that you like it. You like I'm it hot. You, you like it. Don't let me go anywhere. Don't, no, let, don't no, give me no, Never. Anywhere. Never. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Noma Today. Today... I have a special guest. My sweetheart is here with me today. I don't know why does it seem like this September has been like a love couples, video. couples <laughs> videos thing. Oh, uh, maybe it's because this is the month of our anniversary. Yes, and today is our anniversary. <laughs> Seventh of September. We are nine whole years today. Why do I feel like I've been saying we are nine years for like since the beginning of the year? <laughs> But finally, we are nine years, so I can begin to say we are ten years. After today, I'm saying <laughs> we are ten years. Anyways, I have my husband here with me at Only One Z. Please check out his channel. He has amazing fitness content. Wonderful, wonderful. Please, so please check it out. Um, and have Big fun. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. I'm always happy to be yeah. here. Yes. So. <laughs> let's, let's jump right into it. I just wanted to have a small chat about marriage. Um, it's nine years, so we just want to talk about our marriage so far, um, certain questions we want to address and tackle, and we just felt that it would be helpful for people. That's why I want to do it. I hope you'll enjoy it. Let's not waste too much time. I have a couple of questions, five in total, and we'll just basically chat and talk and answer those questions okay so the first question is what is the weirdest thing about me or what yes what's the weirdest thing about me was it either at one point or now you know something that you just found hmm. yeah i don't know it's you i feel like it used to be weird before but now it's something has changed because when we first met early on in our marriage, I, I always felt like you used to sleep a lot. You used to sleep very easily and sleep a lot, you know. You could sleep at any time. You really want you really like sleeping early <laughs> and you could just fall asleep whenever you wanted, you know. But now it just seems like that has changed a bit, like you don't really sleep that much, you know. I mean I know that there are naps once in a while, you know that okay, you need a nap, but it's not like the way it was before. Then it was like a big deal. <laughs> thing, like, um, you want to sleep, you know, like, yeah. Now something, something just seems like it's you know, de-emphasized now. Uh, That's one thing. In in one word or two words, childbirth. Uh. <laughs> childbirth. The weirdest thing about you. I I thought about a lot of weird things. <laughs> But the weirdest thing for me at the very start of our relationship was how much attention you pay when you're watching a movie. <laughs> how much attention? Because I, I, it's just not me. It's not the way I watch. I, don't, I can watch a movie and be reading a book and be, you know, pressing my phone. But when Z is watching a movie, he's concentrating. He's getting the details and it's going to stick. So, you know, when we first got married or when we were together at first, he'll be watching a movie and I'll be expecting that as he's watching it, we'll be gisting about <laughs> other scenes. <laughs> but he can be looking at it and then I'm saying, Z, Z. <laughs> so it was very weird to me. And in the beginning, of course, because any little thing can annoy you. It also used to be annoying because I used to feel like, you know, I should, you know, be the center of your attention. Yeah, well, sometimes maybe there's a line that they are yes. saying or there's something that's critical to the plot of the film that's happening. You yeah. know? So I'll just be like trying to follow yeah. that 
Because if you miss one thing they've said, then uh, later you're not gonna know ah, that was like the clue the person was talking about. So and, yeah, but I also see that that I guess it's probably just the way to watch movies. You have to concentrate. But I also see that that level of concentration carries over into a lot of things that he does. Whenever he's doing something, he does it with his full concentration, and I think that's a good thing. What has been the most surprising thing to you about being married? What shocked you? Didn't expect it to be that way, but somehow it is. <laughs> yeah. I think like um, 70 to 80 percent of everything I want to think about <laughs> marriage is not exactly how it turns out, you know, eventually. But the most surprising thing is that you're not alone you know so you're not you're not single you're not just deciding and going forward with something so there's a lot more collaboration there's a lot more getting opinions and knowing how should we do it it's not just really how do i want to do it and that's 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 just how it goes so i think there's a lot more of you know trying to see if is this a balanced way that we should do it that works for you and works for me then okay let's let's do it this way in the middle so I think that's just the compromise of it is one of the things I would say it was a bit surprising because I didn't quite envisage it to be to that extent. <laughs> so. Yeah. For me, I think um, many things, like you said, <laughs> most things surprised me. I don't know if I really thought deeply about marriage before I got into it. I just, before I got married, I mean, you just feel like, okay, well, yeah, this guy is cool let's you know let's do this i didn't really think so much about will my life change or anything and it um so it was shocking to me when it actually started changing from day one but i think the most surprising was when i realized that you can't just be together and feel this togetherness without working at it like you feel like once we're married then it, we're going to, we're already, ah, we're on this journey together now, but you can actually be apart. You can actually be apart in your mind and you, in a marriage. So it's something that you purposely try to make happen. And I think I will have to credit my husband in the very beginning. I think he understood this a lot better than I did because, for example, if we had um, disagreements or if I was tired I, I want to just you know go and be on my own but from and just normally just in my normal I just felt like you know we'll just be but he was very in the beginning he just kind of was interested in that togetherness like okay there should be time spent together I didn't really understand the importance of it but of course many years down the line I'm getting it that yes we should actually be together we should spend time together we should sort it out together we should you know uh, it didn't come naturally to me but now i feel i understand very much you know the importance but togetherness has to be worked on it doesn't happen naturally is what i'm trying to say one thing that you've learned from being married to me <laughs> so me <laughs> one thing i've learned from you is just to take things a little bit light i think it's a few more things i think just to relax more, to find the funny side of things more, or to stay on the um, light side of things, not take things too seriously or let them push you over the edge too quickly. So I think a lot of the times I just tend to, to be determined to smile and be relaxed and not let things spoil my mood or shift me off that center too quickly. So I think the, the more I was with you, the more I really started being determined to, nah, I'm not going to be, you know, shifted off course just because something like this happened, you know. And even if I am, I'll just find a way to return very quickly and just keep it pleasant and you know, friendly. And... <laughs> but what I have learned from Z, I've learned so many things. Um, to be honest, and it's not just I'm not just saying that because he's my husband, but so, yes. so, yes. <laughs> but I've learned so much, you know, when I was thinking about this question, I've learned, but I'll just highlight some of the important things. I've, I've learned to be more myself, 
to be confident in myself, to think for myself, and to not mind being different. I, I've learned to believe in myself, you know. Those are qualities that I think have always stood out for me, you know, in your life. I think it was the most attractive thing to me when I met him. He was, he is such a confident person. Who he is is who he is. And it doesn't matter what he has or doesn't have. He just believes in himself. And I like that. I like the fact that he thinks for himself. He thinks things through. It's important. Sometimes you can shy away from thinking. <laughs> you know, you just, because it's a little bit difficult or complicated and you don't know what you might find. So you want to stay away from it. But he doesn't do that. He you know tackles the matter head on so i've learned that and the funny thing is that when we got married a lot of these qualities were i loved them but i would find it the extent to which it could go a little bit you know jarring or annoying but i feel like i've grown in those areas i've grown in those areas so those are the you know the things that the fuck i could go on and on and i'm not just saying it there's so much to learn from you so much so i think i've become a, a really finer, better, calmer, wiser <laughs> person as a result of the marriage. So you'll be expecting some money in your account soon. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's welcome. Thanks, yeah, Thanks. What yeah. is your biggest takeaway from disagreements? I feel like we shouldn't, we should talk about disagreements uh, because we all have disagreements. We have disagreements. Couples out there have disagreements. Let's not shy away from it. What do you feel about disagreements? Yeah, the thing is, disagreements are just um, as unpleasant mm -hmm. as they seem. You know, I think that they're just signs that you're dealing with, with two different people. You know, um, the way you see something fundamentally might just be very different from how I see it. Mm -hmm. It's not about, it's not personal, like, oh, no, I, I'm disagreeing with you to show you that you're bad or, or I'm good. You know, it's just... I see it differently, so it just takes a little bit of time and understanding to navigate this through a disagreement to really let our points shine across and then find the compromise. So one of the things that I've learned, and it's not easy to learn this thing <laughs> while, while you're disagreeing, of course, but when you're disagreed a number of times, mm -hmm. you now and you know the person you're disagreeing with, of course, you now come to understand that it's not hatred, there's nothing, there's no animosity there. It's just that maybe there's a misunderstanding or we are not seeing it clearly yet. So let's just talk about it. So one of the main things, to put it very briefly, is communication. It's just to just, you know, talk it through. And while you're communicating, <laughs> try to make sure that, you know, anger doesn't creep in because it just kills the communication. And of course, it's, you're now just like yelling and so if you're just talking and presenting your points through and just letting that person know that you know nobody's at risk of being the bad person or anything or just talking about how why we disagree sometimes you find the middle sometimes you concede and let the other person do it that way you know and then you know, so it's just to just find a way to communicate and, and just to let it not boil over every single time they yeah. disagree you know. i'll just say that i think you should we should all classify our disagreements. Some are serious, some are not that serious, and shouldn't be given any attention. Or should just, I think, find out when something is just a small bother. If it's not big, then don't bother yourself about it. But I feel like um, disagreements are okay, you know. How else will you know somebody else's opinion about something or how they feel about something if they don't say it and you probably don't agree with them, you don't see it that way, but that's fine. I don't think we should classify um, disagreements under bad. It's not a bad thing. It's uncomfortable, but it's not bad. But sometimes when it's not happening... Don't you tend to feel like, ah, this is a good period. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good period. Yes, yeah, yes. Really but what if it's happening because somebody is not yeah, saying somebody's something? Keeping yes, some, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know what? Yeah. You know, yeah. Let me. I'll just, 
I'll just yes. not say anything. Yeah. yeah, it's true, you know. And then when I now say something, I'm like, see, two years, <laughs> I've not said anything. <laughs> But now, yes. here, we have to, to yes, uh-huh, yes, to the death. <laughs> yes. So, so, so if you're not having disagreements because everything is going fine, guys have mastered the art of, you know, compromising. There's no, there's no um, undertone of uh, animosity. Animosity, yes, resentment. Yeah. Then that's a great calmness but if you're not disagreeing because you decided that okay i won't just talk about it even though i feel like that you should also find out <laughs> we should also find out things that you're not supposed to talk about yeah. no it's not like oh i'm not saying anything but it's just like um i'm not saying it because yeah, it's not that thing. yeah move too. on yes so if you have disagreements just how you have the disagreements is very important i think that is the one thing that we all have to learn mm. i have to learn you know and i think we've over the years, we're getting so much better. I think we quickly tried to learn. Yeah. yeah. yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I <laughs> we think quickly so. tried to learn because I don't think we were and we enjoyed nasty disagreements. We don't yeah. we didn't enjoy it. So we were quickly learning, okay, how can we talk better? How can we say the things we want to say better? How can I listen? How can I see what this person is saying? Uh huh. So we're still learning it, but that's what I've um realize about disagreements are how you do it how your heart approaches it you know if you sully your heart and come into it with who does it think he is i'm going to do it but if you come in with it, it will deteriorate and it can become something bigger but if you just say okay let me hear what he's saying <laughs> let me hear let me hear what he's trying to say let me say what i want to say with better words it's a journey yeah. but I think it's something to work towards. So that's what I've learned. Then, another thing to just add to this is that, you know, a lot of the times when you're having a disagreement or let me say quarrel, mm-hmm. when you're really emotional about mm-hmm. it, there's some level of control that goes out of the window. It just flies out. Because if you think of any nasty thing to say and you are determined to say it, then you will say it and it's said. And it's going to do something to the other person. So once you go down that road of you know anything I think about to say that have the most effect, I'll say it right now. Then you're just injuring that person. The person is going to injure you back. <laughs> so when you look at the picture of one, two, three years down the line of acting that way, you you already know. You see the picture of people that you don't want to be <laughs> couples that you know how how it went for them. You already know what not to do at that point. I know you shouldn't. If you continue like this. Then they quickly become like you know, these people or these other relationships that you know you guys are working your you know, trying your best not to be that way. So. The final question is what is the most important lesson that you have learned from being married? I know that that's a very tall question. To say the most important, but you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but just you know, just to pick one yeah. out of my head, I would say the most important lesson is that there are just so many things that you don't know about yourself. You you know your twenty nine year old self very well. You feel like you're wise, you're you're patient, you're kind. But the thing is that you you have not been put in certain situations where you need to um, depend on skills that you're not great at yet. So when you're in marriage, somehow you just because you're working with someone, you're living with someone, you're loving someone, which are all easy and difficult things at the same time. You need to learn more things so it's a humbling experience you just have to understand that there are many other skills that you need to learn about you know um, having a healthy running relationship and that's just one thing about marriage uh, you're just constantly trying to learn better ways to improve yourself so as it kind of sounds boring because i've heard it many times that uh, you know the marriage is a university you never graduate from but in a way, I would say yes, if you want to be really good at something, you just have to find ways to become better at it. You can't just rest and say, okay, I'm great at so, so, so age and I'll always be that way. You know, so. Because our needs are always changing somehow. You know, what she needs, I think, from year to year will change and you will have to evolve and be the partner that she needs. You know, because your one job is to make your partner's life easy and interesting you know so if that changes from time to time you don't have to have 
ways of rising to the occasion from year to year, from phase to phase, you know, so I, I feel like my own needs to my change and she she's with me so she'll have to who else will I be looking to to, you know, so it'll be hard that she'll need to change and evolve and grow. You know, so that's just the humbling thing about it. For me, another thing I was su surprising I think it's closely related to what you, you know, how you started your point. It's just that I'm not great like that. <laughs> yeah. I still have a lot to learn. You know, it's not, it doesn't come really clear to you sometimes until you have to be with somebody that close and have to meet certain requirements or needs. I don't want to say requirements because, it's not, you know, but just like be a certain kind of person so that a healthy relationship can thrive. And then you begin to realize that, um, okay, so I have issues with this. I have issues with this. I have issues with this. And then I feel like whether or not your marriage becomes great is dependent on how willing you are to better yourself as a person. To because work yourself, To work on yourself. You know, because it's very easy, and I feel that that is a rabbit hole, and that's a bad place to be where you, except of course, I mean, there's situations where actually your partner is a is a bad person. But when you come initially, if you guys are okay, if if you tend to look at the other person and say that person is not doing this, doing this, doing this, doing that, I feel that you're on the wrong path. You're you should really look inward and say why am I responding this way. Why am I not understanding? Why do I stay long, have long bouts of malice? Why am I, you know, you just realize that I'm not as forgiving as I should be. I'm not as patient. I'm not, I don't listen. I don't listen. I jump to conclusions. You begin to see, <laughs> like, are you serious? Me that I was there, you know, miss. <laughs> Wonderful. So for me, uh, that's the lesson. Uh, it's, it can be about the other person, but usually it's, about you and sometimes your own adjustments might depending again on the person that you're with your adjustments can also influence your partner so when you're trying you're doing better your partner probably respond better too with time and not happen immediately but with time too you notice some some changes there's a there are relationships where somebody is toxic yeah and that's different but like a relationship where both of you are trying to do your best and just normal yeah. <laughs> healthy people yeah. yeah you should do work on yourself, work on yourself. improve yourself yes that's the humbling part of it because yes for the most part you feel that you're man i'm a package you know, <laughs> i'm great yeah i'm this i'm yes. smart i'm wise yes. i'm this boy not really to the extent that you think it's good to be confident but it's also good to be able to you know examine yourself and know that you know i need to i'm reacting just on instinct in this area and that area i need to settle down and improve because it's because for instance i know some things that i was doing during our first year that i would never had you know a scenario quite like that to let me see it so clearly that uh, this thing i'm doing you know i need to try and change it and it wasn't even easy to change it because it's instinct it's, it's, it's just pure instinct you're, you're used to yourself behaving that way you know, that you feel the other person should change something about what you're observing in them. But it's you who should change the way you're <laughs> presenting that point, you know. So sometimes you just need to see this little intricate pattern and say, ah, you know, I need to change something about myself. So, and that can be humbling too. Some people run away from a relationship completely because they feel they didn't just like the way it made them feel like they were not so great and they needed to improve it must be that other person's fault you know you know i'm done with this situation. i want someone that will just be serving me and making me feel great you know but when you're able to face this and say oh, okay you know what let me try and change it. it might not happen the first month second month third month then you now start to you know yeah. make some changes and you see the effect immediately that's what you're saying yeah. Yeah. the other person just now responds better yeah. because you're you have changed that little All bit. right, so Z, nine years. Tell me how wonderful I've been. You have been a prisoner in my... <laughs> <laughs> you have been a prisoner of my love. Is it, is it, is, is it shackle tight? Not too tight. It's not too tight? Yeah, tight <laughs> <laughs> are you feeling choked or are you no. just feeling like... I like where I am. You do. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just know that you like yeah. it. You like I'm it hot. You, you like it tight. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me 
never. It's been nine years. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful to you. I'm so grateful to God for you. When you're getting married, I always say this, when you're getting married, you don't know <laughs> what's going on. I mean, God hits, God helps us and all that, but what I'm trying to say is, you don't know what you need, but I think that God has used you to meet so many needs in my life, surpassed my expectations, surpassed my foolishness, all the things that, yes, all the things that you, you, you don't know you need, God gave it to me in a package, and the most beautiful thing is that you're willing to grow with me and learn with me as you are such a blessing a pillar <laughs> you are such a pillar in my life you are a, pre a gift to me you are my gift so just say oh yeah let me just let me help this girl <laughs> thank you thank you babe thank you Feel like I've been the one I've been blessed. Oh. You know? I don't even feel like you know. Yeah. So anything that I do, any, any way that I am, I feel like I'm only this way because I'm in the right place. Like I feel like you know this is where I'm meant to be. This is who I'm you know, meant to be with. So I feel I feel blessed. Guys, check our other videos out. I think we'll be living now. <laughs>